Well, here we are in uh, Burbank Kitchens, uh, which I'm calling kitchens because it sounds a little fancier, mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's plural. But, but truth be told, it's just our regular old kitchen with uh, the man himself, Mr. Tom Douglas of uh, Tom Douglas Restaurants, of being an awesome chef, of until recently having a radio show. Hi, Tom. Went the same path as you. Just got booted, except I don't have as many downloads as you have. Well, you know, we already have people on uh, the website uh, encouraging you to start a podcast. Is there a chance you might do something like that? Oh, there's a chance, absolutely. But, uh, you know, unlike some of the other radio guys there, I have another job, <laughs> several. And so it's been a nice breather to not have to be there every Saturday night. But, you know, it's been fun, too. I kind of got the radio bug. So I'm thinking about it, thinking what the options are. Okay, so Tom, Easter is a coming, is. And, uh, and, and, and you've brought uh, some uh, Easter-related fare that you're going to kind of try to show us how to cook here. Um, what, all, what all do we have in front of us, and what are we going to make today? Well, having uh, showed you how to make a turkey, yes. I recognize... Uh, I was very drunk, actually, dur you, I was very drunk during have... that recording. That was the problem, because you offered us some delicious scotch when we got there. Right. And, uh, Which I got no offer of. Thank you. I just Come on now. Don't, don't hate for the camera. I went out and bought some balance. Alvany. I don't even know if that's how you say it. I was trying to be fancy for you. Would you? You could have. I could. We could you could have some scotch if you want. Okay, fine. I, I like some scotch. Okay. But, but what I learned in teaching you how to cook a turkey was that we really have to kind of tear back all the way to the core of your <laughs> of your cooking abilities because uh, uh, you know people that aren't in the kitchen every day it's it, it's pretty simple stuff to me, but m maybe not necessarily to you or to your listeners. Now, uh, what is the mistake that most awful cooks like me make? Is it that they don't trust themselves enough or that they trust themselves too much? I think it's a, you, you make both of those mistakes, but I think the first thing you should do is try a recipe out of a book. It's okay. It's not unmanly. It, uh, you know, I brought you a boner, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> now, um, now explain for the radio audience, lest they think that this is turning into a porno. I brought you a boner. So, so basically, when you're working with, I have a rack of lamb here. Uh, when you're working with a rack of lamb, it's good to have a boning knife. Uh, and in the business, we call them, see, that's my picture right there. That's beautiful. Yeah. from the uh, Tom Douglas collection. I Look at that. I seen that or not. A, my, a cheap, cheap plug. So uh, what's the, this is an Easter rack of lamb that you're going to make today. And, and where do we start with it? Well, I'm going to show you two ways to make rack of lamb. So I've got the, this is a typical $20 Costco rack of lamb, um, $40 from a grocery store. So you, you buy, you buy meat at Costco. That's, that does that's not day class A to you. No, although the Costco rack of lamb is Australian from a typical grocery store. It's American. So I, I like to buy American. Okay. So this is the $40 rack of lamb from Ballard Market. Uh-huh. So I'm going to show you two ways. We can either make it as a rack of lamb and, um, I'm going to leave four bones in that way. All right. So there's a rack of lamb. And then I'm going to show you, this is even simpler. We're going to make uh, lamb chops. And see, see this area right here? Yeah. Can you see that in the light? Yeah. The chine bone is already taken off here, so you can actually cut through the chops. If that bone, this bone here hadn't been taken off, you wouldn't be able to slice through that. That's called the what bone? Chine bone. And that, that was what was keeping the lamb's internal organs and heart protected? It's the skeleton. Right, okay. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. the sternum and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so I call these lollipop lamb chops. All right? Okay. These cook in a matter of minutes. This is going to take 15 minutes to cook. Is lamb one of those meats that, because we will sometimes get a rack of lamb from Trader Joe's that's all sort of pre-doused in stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we'll cook it. And, and then sometimes I'm not quite sure if it's done in the middle, but I'm not sure if lamb is one of those things that can be really rare and it's fine. Like, you know, you can't do that with chicken, supposedly, but you can do it with beef. Where's lamb fall in that continuum? You can eat rare lamb. It's no problem. But what do you mean you're not quite sure it's done in the middle? Don't you have a meat thermometer? No. Well, how do you... <laughs> this is what would make you a better cook, <laughs> is go out and buy it, a $5 meat thermometer so that you know if it's done or not. Okay, so you've got a couple of um, skillets uh, sort of heating here on the stove, and, and what's, what's going to happen next? So I'm going to make these uh, lollipop lamb chops. So I'm just going to take a little bit of mustard, spread it right on top there. And I'm going to take some of my uh, dry mushroom rub. 
Man, you have like every product. This is a Tom, this is patented Tom Douglas mushroom rub. I didn't even say it out loud. I wasn't going to go there. I, I'm listen. Are you kidding me? We're all about the plugs here. I mean, that's all you're getting out of this. You brought us food and a boner, and all you're and getting is a pl so plug away. So you have you have all kinds of rubs and spices I too. Do. And it makes cooking really simple. Uh, and I, you know, cooks say that all the time. Well, this is so simple, and they're just lying through their teeth. Mm -hmm. But when you have little ingredients like this in your pantry, it's pretty. It's pretty foolproof. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the the rack of lamb is rubbed. The oil is in the pan. Now, you could use a brown butter. You could use bacon fat, duck fat. Right here is just a little vegetable oil. And we're going to literally just brown. Let me use the small pan for this. Okay. We're going to sear this. And then when I get a nice brown on that, I'm going to pop it in the oven for it to finish. That's more like a roast. This is the rack of lamb hat. I've noticed that when, when we did the uh, turkey a couple years ago with you and Terry Rotaro, you uh, also, before you made the gravy, uh, there was a lot of browning of things. Is that a trick? Because that would never occur to me to brown something before I, I cook it or bake it. Well, it's caramelization. So we can consider fat and brown as flavor. Now, a lot of the new way of cooking this sous vide kind of scenario is yeah, all yeah. about slow, slow, slow poaching in a plastic bag in its own juices, never taking it over, say, sometimes 80 degrees, 100 degrees, you know, so. And that's really popular, like, on Top Chef. Everyone's always sous videing everything. It is, but in this city, it's illegal unless you have a hazardous, a, a HACCP plan, a hazardous material plan, because they, the health department considers it unsafe. But they don't think it's really cooking. They think it's just kind of warming it up. Right. So it's against all of their rules. So uh, we have filed a HACCP plan for our salami, for our sausage making, and now to do sous vide, we we also have a HACCP plan. I've heard that the charcuterie is like really expensive and hard to that. do. Wow. So that's already now that's nice and brown. Brown. Okay. See, that's actually really encouraging for me to see that level of brown because I I would think that was right on the edge of being burned. No. 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 Plus, mustard browns beautifully, and it's got a dark rub on it. So now, while that's, we're going to pop that into the oven. I, I wish, this is, they always say this on cooking shows. Oh, that's okay. That'll, that'll live. I've, I've baked stuff in this drunkenly before, and it's survived. Um, I, people always say this on cooking shows, and I always think it's lame, except I'm, I'll say it now. I wish you could smell what this smells like at home. It is insane. All right. So now, on the next one, these are what I call lollipop lamb chops, so a single cut lamb chop. And we're going to do the same thing with these, except these are going to cook all the way on top of the stove. Oh, I see. So those are never going to go in the oven. Those just no. get... Okay. I didn't even know you could do that with lamb chops. Or with, but with, 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 you know... Well, we whatever. like a medium rare. And so um, these will take about five minutes to cook. See, now look at that nice brown there. And we're going to finish these on top of the stove. So I'm going to turn them down just a, a little bit. You know, i got to say, Luke, of all the things that I wasn't expecting coming to your house... Or to your studios. Yes, thank you. Uh, to my kitchens, plural. Your kitchens was a commercial stove. It was here when we bought the house. And I have to say that um, when we got this, I, this sounds crazy. I'm not kidding. When, when we bought this house, I thought, I'm going to try to get Tom Douglas in here to cook on this. That is no joke. And here it is. Um, so the other thing I, I got is I got, you know, it's spring onion time here in Seattle. Yeah. Getting Walla Walla sweets. And I find that um, when I deglaze a pan... I like to deglaze with something that I can kind of use as a relish on top. What does deglaze mean? You, you see this area right here, this this part that's stuck to the pan? Yeah. That's uh, that's um, has to come off if you want all that goodness back on your lamb chop. So you take it and you deglaze it. What stuff is glazed to the pan, you deglaze it and end up with a sauce. I see. So you put something else that will kind of soak it up a little bit? Yeah, I could deglaze with red wine. I could deglaze. I want to deglaze with onion. These have moisture in them. And the onions have a nice way of picking up all that all that goodness that's there. You can see already the onions are starting to get a little bit. See that kind of thing right there. This is, that's what we don't want to leave in the pan, that dark goodness. All, all right, so, so we've got onions that have now, they're de no, doing right. their deglazing. What else would you call those onions from where you saw them in the beginning? Well, how would I describe them now? Yes. Um, There's a term we use in cooking. Uh, uh, okay, hold on, hold on. Sauteed? Well, they are sautéed, but they're wilted. I thought wilted sounded like a pejorative. I didn't want to say wilted because it sounded like a diss. Well, what is a, a – oh, so pejorative is a diss, huh? Yeah, I thought that that – okay, they do look a little wilted, but yes. again, I was always taught wilted was a bad thing. What else, what else do you see? You see the little brown chunks? Yeah. That's all the loosey-goosey stuff that came from the chops. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. So you could take this here. And where is that scotch that you were talking about? Okay, okay. Uh, Here, I'll hold you this. Can hold this. You, can you, always, you know, when I did Iron Chef, this is the only thing that I brought 
uh, for we are allowed to bring uh, different th stuff for your pantries, whether it's going to be vegetables, seafood, or meat. And all three pantries had a bottle of Maker's Mark. Wow. I, you you don't even know. He just took a swig off it. You don't even know the uh, the heartbreak that I'm suffering as as a non-drinking person until Sunday. Whoa! Holy. Oh my God! Okay, we just had. My head was coughed. My head was away, right? Because yeah. Thanks for the warning. Okay, so now we're just going to take our onions and just kind of place them right on top of the chops. Are you going to eat this or are you just going to chop? I am. Let's do this. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, Let's do it under the light here. Mm. There you go. Look at now you can see the professional. Those. Okay. I'm going to... Can here. I just grab? I'm not even going to cut it. I'm just going to start. Oh, here. yeah. Uh, mm. Wow. That is so good. That is like really sweet from the from the rub and the maker's mark. I have to say, I'm not hating the maker's mark in it at all. And then the onions are deglazed perfectly. De Beautiful. They're wilted and deglazed. Now, if you like it more rare, All around the kitchen, cock-a-doodle-doodle-doo. All around the kitchen, cock-a-doodle-doo.